this is Meg at Chasing Retro. I'm going to show you tonight a few kits that will be hitting my shop later tonight, probably very late tonight, to be honest. Uh, so be on the lookout for those if it's something that you are interested in. Uh, but they, of course, as, as long as they don't sell out right away, they will be available this weekend. Uh, these are sewing kits with personalities, sewing junk journal kits with personalities. And I'm going to show you all of them. There are going to be eight, and there are some similarities among them and of course differences as well. So let me begin by first showing you that all of them will receive a selection of sewing themed book pages. I have these all ready to put in one in each kit that I'm putting together. These are just uh, pages from the stash of sewing pages that I have that I pull from when I make sewing journals. This one is really cool. This is probably my newest uh, obtained one. This one has handwritten notes by the lady who used this for seamstress um, purposes. And then these are some really cool patterns that came in a book, a sewing instruction book. Um, and then these are from the, I think this is Better Homes and Gardens sewing book. Um, beautiful pages, glossy pages. And then last is a book from the 1940s, The Complete Book of Sewing, and the pictures in here are just absolutely dreamy. I love them so much. So each kit will receive one of each of these in the stack. So let's move on to the kits. The first one is uh, a child-themed kit. All of these have the sewing pattern as the inspiration and as the base. And then my hopes is that this, each kit will give you enough material that you can create a small sewing journal from its contents. Now you'll have to add your own things like, I didn't put in coffee dad paper, Kool-Aid dad paper, notebook paper, ledger paper, things like that. But I did try to include lots of other interesting things themes that are in the theme of each kit. If you would like to use the pattern inside a journal, you can, and, and then create a fabric cover journal, and I'll show you the fabric in a minute. Or you can do what I've done in the past and make the cover out of the sewing pattern envelope. So this kit is called the first day of school, first grade, first day of first grade. Uh, and then here are the items that will be in this journal. Each journal will receive a rather large, most of them are going to be at least a quarter of a yard, some a little bit more, some a little bit less, a tiny bit less, not much less. I wanted to give you enough material to make a journal cover with. So that was my goal. Um, this one will, may even make two journals because it's a lot. But, you know, depending on the, which kit you choose, I'm just sharing some of my fabric stash with you. <clears throat> and you can uh, make the journal accordingly, according to how much is in each kit. Uh, and so I've also done some fabric swatch cards. So these are imagined uh, fabrics that were maybe in the running for the, the romper for the first day of school, but didn't make the cut. So each kit will have a fabric swatch duo. Each kit will have a button card, a vintage button card and a loose vintage button. Each kit will have a fabric ruffle. Every kit will have a thread bobbin, oops, thread bobbin in a corresponding color. Each kit will have some sort of sewing notion. This one has snap fasteners that are partially used. Uh, each kit will have two of my fabric uh, flashcards. Um, and then each kit varies as far as what other ephemera is included based on the theme. So this one is back to school. So I have these two felt shapes from a math flannel board kit. I thought this would be fun. I have a calling card or a blank belongs to card that I thought had the perfect colors for this. I have a flash card that, or maybe this is vocabulary. Um, I have another flash card. Each kit will have some sort of trim wrapped around a little uh, paper trim card that I have made. Uh, this one has two 
flowers. One is crocheted and one is paper. Each kit will have a vintage colored index card. This pattern is the only pattern that did not have the contents inside. So I've added in the instructions to another children's pattern for use in the journal. This one has a vintage uh, finger puppet from the Three Little Pigs. This is a little uh, classroom. I don't really know what this would be called. Um, I got it in Happy Mail, but I have several puzzle pieces. I thought it was cute for a school themed kit. This is a book page about two little kids on their first day of school. This is a vocabulary strip. This is from a cursive handwriting book. I got this at Recraft. That was just a lucky find because normally they don't carry things like that. This is some of the tracing paper, a sewing tracing paper page. It's somewhat waxy in feel, and this one is partially used. You can see where the little roller had made lines. And then this is a very old, early 1950s math textbook page. So this is the, um, the sewing, I'm sorry, this <laughs> first day of first grade kit. This second kit is called Sopranist at the Dedication Ceremony of a New Park. Um, the name of the park uh, is up to you. <laughs> you can create the journal according to the story or you can just use it as a general sewing junk journal kit. I don't really care. I thought it would be a fun way to organize the ephemera to go in each kit. So this one has a lot of pinks, greens, yellows. The fabric that she was looking at making her dress out of are these two. It's beautiful, uh, I don't know what you call this. Uh, it's like coral and gray and then this beautiful yellow floral. But she ended up going with this piece of beautiful unsaturated floral in like sage green and cornflower blue and rum pink. Uh, this, I had a hard time getting rid of this, y'all. This is one of the pieces that I found at, at the estate sale where I showed y'all the amazing vintage fabric that I found in the attic. Um, so this looks like maybe a quarter of a yard cut all the way across. Um, but yeah, I thought this would be a beautiful journal cover. This kit also comes with two vintage index cards. A pink plaid ruffle, flashcards, button card, and a vintage button. Some flowers, two paper flowers, and a satin flower. A little doily, thread card, some uh, still wrapped bias tape, one of the sewing uh, tracing paper sheets in green. This is some Kool Aid dyed lace. Two tickets. I am letting go of one of my vintage gloves. This is faux leather and it is absolutely beautiful. I love it. So I'm putting um, two of the kits will have one of these gloves in it. That would be beautiful tied on top. Here's a thank you card. Maybe she received this as a, a thank you after her performance. This is a garden book page about begonias and I thought this looked very park-esque. And then here is a postcard from Hot Springs National Park, Arkansas. That's the only park, uh, flash, um, not flashcard. <laughs> Did I say flashcard? Postcard um, that I have. This is a receipt. Maybe this is how she was paid for her performance. And this is just a little page. I imagine someone who sings with um, operatic tones would be very well versed on famous tropes. So I put this in there. And of course, a music sheet and the cover of a music book that just looked like possibly a journal cover waiting to happen. Okay, so this one is called Sopranist at Dedication of a New Park. The third kit is a Ladies Auxiliary Luncheon. This is a Marion Martin pattern. I believe it's Marion Martin. Um, this one I also did not have the pattern tissue for, but I have the full instructions. This one would not make as good of a junk journal cover because it is a very thin paper, but it can definitely be used inside the journal. 
So it's sort of a light summery frock feeling thing and possibly was held, uh, the luncheon was held at one of the homes of the ladies in the club. So imaginary contents include, this is some of the vintage scallop trim that I have, a thread card, a pen, lovely to pin it on top maybe. Uh, we have a yellow button card partially used and a vintage yellow button. Hook and eyes, more flashcards, some paper daisies, a fabric ruffle with a geometric print. Here are the two swatches that she decided against and here is the piece that she decided to make the dress from. This is one of my favorite fabrics in my stash. I adore it. Love it. And a large applique, or you could also call this a coaster because it's lovely and it's coaster. Uh, and then I put in a paper coaster that maybe the lady who was the hostess had at the, at the table. A type recipe for white cake with white frosting, beautifully aged. This is a napkin, a very old napkin from the 50s that I pulled out of a scrapbook. I thought it was perfect for this. Here is a party invitation, not written in. Here is a, a matchbook. So maybe this is the grocery store where she got her supplies for her luncheon. Here is a rectangle paper doily. This is a sheet from a printery. So maybe she had the invitations printed at this local establishment. And then we have a couple of recipe cards, I'm sorry, recipe book pages for punch and salads and things that ladies would like to have at a luncheon. I put a couple of pictures in here. I don't know that the luncheon is held at a home this grandiose, but it's pretty cool. I thought it would make a neat page. And then this is a lovely patio garden picture. And then here's an address book page with some beautiful flowers because she needs the addresses of all of her club members. Pink index card. This is half of a paper placemat. I love these. I found these early in my junk journaling days. Um, they're from the early 70s, I think. And then last of all, a piece of the tracing paper. Again, this is the Ladies Auxiliary Luncheon. This kit is called Game Night at the Baxters. This one is a little more late 70s, maybe early 80s, so you can tell by the fashion that they're wearing. Just a somewhat casual dress that she might wear, heading over to play some games on a Friday night with some friends. This kit has an applique an orange ruffle. This kit also has sort of a fall feel if you're into that right now because of the season. I have two paper flowers, a gold thread card, another pin, one of these buttons that I think everybody's mom and grandma had on a sweater or a coat back then, a belt and buckle kit by Dritz, very cool and vintage. This is some tea dyed eyelet, flashcards, tracing paper in a beautiful maize yellow. Um, vintage buttons right here. This like, they look wood, but I, I think they are wood and then they're lacquered right here. Um, here are the two materials that she was deciding between, but she ended up going with this beautiful 70s looking daisy print. And then here are all the ephemera pieces. Uh, index card, some cards from the game called Probe, Canasta instruction book, password game, a bridge tally, bridge score sheet. Uh, this is Skip Bow, a bingo card. This is gonna be a long game night, y'all. <laughs> Monopoly, Monopoly. You know, if it gets a little crazy, got some poker going too. Rook and three different just normal playing cards. Oh, Yahtzee scorecard and Uno. I'm telling you, there's a lot of games tonight. Um, of course, you got to have snacks. 
So I have a page with snacks on it, hors d'oeuvres, fruit salad, and Cheerios candy. I thought that sounded super 70s. <laughs> this is game night at the Baxter's. This one is called University Sophomore. It's exactly what it sounds like. It's a girl who knows how to sew and she is a sophomore at a local women's college. And she's got all kinds of fun stuff here. We have the two swatches that she was deciding between and decided against. We have a beautiful floral and this, which I thought looked a lot like what's on the cover here. But she ended up going with something a little edgy. Look at this. Y'all might remember this. I found this at a flea market. It is very 60s, very authentic, and it is actually French. I looked it up. Um, French fast, French international fabrics or something like that. Super neat. Uh, I did find a couple of shift dresses that were made out of this for sale. So, legit. <laughs> Uh, this is a uh, fabric ruffle in sort of an eye cap print. We have several daisies because, hello, 60s, flower power, and then a crocheted daisy as well. We have some buttons, a loose one, and some card, uh, some on a card. This super cool pin, thread card, some polka dot grogain ribbon, a khaki colored zipper, index card. The only card postcard I have of a college, this is Agnes Scott College in Georgia. Library catalog card. Greek flashcard. <laughs> and a lot of page, well here's the sewing tracing paper in a navy blue. And here's all the pages of the books that she hits hard during the week in her studies. Art history, uh, this is English literature. This is um, physics. And then we have some German, two Germans. And then we have North Carolina history book pages. And then a dictionary page. And this is much older than the time period reflected. But this is a page from a 1922 yearbook that I was gifted in Happy Mill from Mary at Plethora of Paper. I decided to let one of these go. And it's, just pretend like it says 1962, okay? But it's maybe a yearbook sentiment of this college sophomore, college sophomore kid. All right, secretarial school. Let's say she finishes college and she decides to go to secretarial school. Now she has everything she needs. We have a button card, beautiful red, and then this beautiful rusty colored chunky button. We have the two fabrics she decided against. One of them, I love it when this happens, looks just like that one. <laughs> but the one she decided on is this beautiful floral. I love this fabric so much. Then we have a fabric ruffle. We have this beautiful red violet lace, a red thread card, a paper flower, a little doily, Fabric flashcards, fabric tracing paper, a maroon zipper, and the other glove, y'all. It's going into this kit. A Steno page, Western Union Telefax page, daily appointment calendar page, while you were out, colored Rolodex cards, a very thick, very cool index card divider, time card, another while you were out, it got separated, uh, two pages from a shorthand textbook, typewriter textbook, and I also just received this in Happy Mail from Mary. This is from a secretarial instruction book, and it's how to type up inventory. And last but not least, I had to fold this to fit it in the kit, but it is an interdepartmental mail envelope. So this would also make a really cool journal cover if you wanted to not use the pattern or the fabric. So I give you the secretarial school kit. Okay, this one is called Open House for the Newly Renovated Woman's Club. I know that's very specific, but it's just what I thought of when I saw this picture. I love this pattern. It is so elegant and so chic. 
Let's see if this one has a date. 64. Okay, so the fabrics that she chose against were very much like the cover, a yellow and this beautiful cerulean blue. And she decided on this boldly printed, surprisingly, turquoise cotton, which I love this. It's just so classic and so 60s looking. We have some beautiful, beautiful vintage turquoise braided trim, blue index card, fabric flash cards and turquoise thread card, button card and a giant mother of pearl looking button, a beautiful pen. I love that one. We have three uh, paper daisies, or these aren't daisies, but this is. And then a beautiful ruffle and a navy zipper and another one of the doilies, navy blue tracing paper, another one of these paper doilies, a garden page about roses because it's the women's club. Perhaps the women's club's uh, name starts with P. So here's a P coaster. A topiary note sheet. Some tickets because you've got to have a silent auction or some sort of raffle. And then here is the imagined invitation to this luncheon or open house rather. And then here's a recipe for cherry pineapple punch. I want some of that right this minute. And then we have some hors d'oeuvres or <laughs> horse duvers, and that's what some people call them. And fruit salad, vegetable salads. Here is what I imagine the women's club might look like. You take your pick. Pretty epic. And then uh, another address book page for keeping track of all the ladies and the donors. And last but not least, a sheet of wallpaper that might have been one of the wallpapers chosen for one of the main dining rooms. So this, as I said, is the open house for the newly renovated women's club kit. Last but not least is lunch with Aunt Harriet. Now let's imagine that Aunt Harriet wants to take us to lunch because it's Aunt Harriet's birthday, or maybe it's because it's our birthday, or maybe it's because there's some sort of secret scandal that she wants to gossip about over food. Whatever it is, you're going to have lunch with Harriet today, and you have to be looking your best. So here's what we have uh, decided on. This beautiful fitted two-piece dress set, with or without the hat. Sorry, I can't mail you that hat. And then this is in 1964. The peak of fashion, in my opinion. The fabrics that we were deciding between are a floral in this uh, rum, not rum, raw silk, <laughs> raw silk. But she decided this might be a little bit too formal for this occasion. So she decided to sort of um, throw Aunt, Aunt Harriet a loop and be a little bit bold in her choices. So this is a true 1964 looking beautiful floral print. It is not that old, but it's probably not that much newer than that. It is one of my favorite pieces of material. I let go of it just for this kit. Whoever gets this kit is going to love it. It's so, so awesome. We have a gingham ruffle. We have a blue paper doily. We have this beautiful fringe trim that you would just cut or pull the string off of to release the fringe thread card. Some really bold round blue buttons and a statement button maybe for the neckline. And then we have a paper daisy and a doily. And we have more flashcards. We have, oops, another daisy. We have no silk belt kit still in the package. We have a matchbook from Bloor Jane Restaurant. I'm gonna leave it up to you. Do you think that Aunt Harriet took her to Bloor Jane Restaurant or to this fine establishment here in Florida? This is the Columbia Restaurant in the Latin Quarter in Tampa. So I'll let you decide that. Blue index card. 
an expense report because, you know, we have to keep track of when we eat out and such. Here's the guest check. If you decide to go with Harriet being the birthday girl, here is a birthday card for her. Lovely plush satin embellishment there on the front. Ready to you for you to sign your signature. Tracing paper and a beautiful clip-on earring. So this can be clipped on the edge of a page. Okay, this is lunch with Aunt Harriet, guys. All of these will be in my shop as soon as I can get these listed. Thanks for watching. I know this was a random video. I hope you enjoyed it. I had so much fun putting these together. I wanted to do something a little fun for you guys. So I'll talk to you in the next video.